An entitled Karen tries to steal my phone after I refuse to give it to her child. She then ends up breaking my phone and the cops have to show up. Here's what happened. So this story takes place when I had fallen sick and had to book an emergency appointment with the doctor so I could get checked out. I also needed paperwork for my work from my doctor basically saying that I was here. I was sitting in the waiting room using my phone to distract myself from the uncomfortable feeling in my stomach. I was just sitting there on my phone reading Reddit when the entitled Karen and her her child came in. The entitled Karen went up to the front desk and said, I have an appointment with a doctor for my little angel. The receptionist checked the register with the aid of the names and the entitled Karen's ID and told them flat out, ma'am, you're two hours early. Would you prefer to come back in two hours or do you want to wait in the waiting room for an opening? The entitled Karen looked at the lady at the front desk and said, I will just go sit down with my little angel. Just please go talk to the doctor and I'm sure he will see us immediately. As a side note, the waiting room was incredibly busy. A lot of people are here and my own appointment is already being delayed by about 20 minutes. The entitled Karen and her child sit down a few chairs over and I was just minding my own business reading stories on Reddit on my phone when suddenly the Karen's kid was standing right in front of me. They looked at me and said, do you have any games on your phone? I responded and said, just a few but I'm reading right now. The kid then immediately chimed in and said, can I play games on your phone? I looked up and I said I would rather not. As I said I'm reading, and this is a good distraction from the sick feeling I've got. This spoiled brat then goes to his mom and cries about not being able to play games on my phone. The entitled Karen then comes over to me and says, Give my little angel your phone. You've clearly had it for too long already, so you can miss it for a few minutes. When she said this, I was absolutely dumbfounded. I said, Ma'am, I'm not giving your son my phone. I like my phone, and I would rather not have your son break it more than it already is. As a note, my phone has a few cracks on the screen, but it's not impossible to use. I then ask the Karen, why won't you just let him use your phone? This entitled Karen just wasn't having it. When she said, you clearly have no idea what it is like to have children. He will break my phone if I let him. But if he breaks yours, it won't matter because you're obviously capable of buying a new one yourself. I have no idea why she thinks that, as I'm not even dressed fancy or wearing expensive jewelry. Also, if I could buy a new phone so easily, I would not be using this one still after seven years and many falls and scratches and cracks. I look at her flat out and I say, I'm not giving your son my phone. A moment of silence happens when suddenly I hear footsteps and I see a glimpse of long fake nails as my phone is snatched out of my hands. I look up to see this entitled Karen holding my phone triumphantly while smirking down at me. Her spoiled little brat was even standing next to her smiling too. And this is where things really started to pop off. Because out of nowhere, an older gentleman that was in the lobby, gets up, grabs her by the wrist, and very calmly tells her to give me my phone back. He says, I might be retired from the police force, but I still know how to restrain a thief, and I can call someone to arrest you in seconds. The entitled Karen flipped the switch and said, How dare you assault me in front of my child, you old lying fart. Get your hands off of me, or I will call the real cops on you. After this, everything went so fast. My phone ended up on the ground, and the entire Titled Karen was yelling at the receptionist, complaining that they were letting sickos and criminals do as they please in their lobby. The spoiled brat was also crying at this Karen's leg, while the older gentleman asked if I'm okay. It took me a little to realize that I had quite the scratch on my face from this entitled Karen's horrible nails, who must have suddenly scratched me without me realizing. The scratches weren't bad, but they did hurt a little bit. The entitled Karen got so uptight against the receptionist that she ended up forcing them to call the police, which were just one street away. Pretty quickly, the police arrived, and the entitled Karen started to yell lies at them. But the officer recognized the older gentleman and knew him to be an honest man. So they asked him what happened. They also asked my side of the story, as well as the front desk receptionist, trying to figure out what actually happened. This entitled Karen was enraged and screams about how everyone is against her, as well as her little angel. As she gets taken away with her son, I pick up my phone to see extra scratch marks on my phone, making it completely unreadable. I got asked by the police officer if I wanted to press charges, but I didn't want to go through all of that. To this day, my phone is still unusable, and thankfully, I didn't get seriously injured. It turns out that this entitled Karen is known for such behavior, and this wasn't her first time getting dragged off by the police. The receptionist even told me that half the time that she comes in here, the entitled Karen's kid is not even sick. But in reality, all she wants to do 
is just flirt with the doctor. That is absolute madness. I can't imagine someone destroying my personal property as well as somebody scratching me in the face all because I didn't want to give them my phone. And why would you? This person was clearly just going to break it. How unbelievably entitled do you have to be to act like that? That's just super cringy. And it literally blows my mind that the original poster didn't press charges. If I was in their shoes, I would have immediately pressed charges on this person. They assaulted you and they destroyed your phone. I would have gladly pressed charges against this individual because I would never want anybody else to have to deal with this. But thankfully, it looks like there's good people in the world because that older gentleman stepped up to the plate and helped take care of this crazy Karen. But leave a comment down below. What would you do if you were in this situation? Would you have just let it slide and say, hey, this is not worth my time? Or would you have pressed charges against this person after they scratched you and destroyed your phone? Let us know down below. My boyfriend is draining me financially, and I'm not sure if I should break up with him or if I should stay. We've been together for seven years and living together for six. The first few years were great. We laughed, made memories, taught each other how to grow and be confident. It literally felt like I was living a cheesy rom-com. Things changed when he quit his job a few years ago. At first, he couldn't go back because he was medically unfit to work, but then the story changed into him not wanting to be a part of the system anymore. As a result, I juggled two to three jobs just to make ends meet. It cost me my free time, my hobbies, and my health. A few months ago, I was able to move from two jobs to just one that paid really, really well. However, I still can't keep up with the bills. I broke down one night and begged him to find work again because it was mentally and physically draining me to be the sole provider in this household. He said he would look, but his criteria for work is impossible to meet, especially with his work history and bad attitude towards authority. I've asked him to jump into anything that would allow me to catch my breath, but he tells me that I'm asking too much of him, stating that I need to stop trying to live a lavish life or whatever that means. And he says this every time I ask him to get to work. Ever since becoming the sole provider in this house, I've never had a day off. I've never bought anything myself unless I needed it for work, and I even gave up my hobbies. I started wondering, am I selfish for wanting a day off and not have to wonder if we can eat dinner that night? I want to leave. Every sign is telling me to leave and never look back. But when I start to have the conversation, I'm guilted into feeling like the crazy one or that I have too high of expectations for life. I also worry that since he has no job, he'll end up homeless or loveless. The last thing I want to do is ruin his life. After all, we had some genuinely good moments together that I can't seem to forget. This is my first long-term relationship and I don't have a lot of dating experience, especially when it comes to breakups. This is honestly so hard and I don't know what to do. Your boyfriend has it completely twisted. You're not trying to live a lavish lifestyle. You're literally trying to make ends meet because he's too lazy to get back to work. This man is playing you 100%. He is gaslighting you into thinking that anything less than you working your butt off means that you are entitled and not doing enough. I mean, you asked him to get a job and he basically said, whoa, you're asking too much. It's completely unfair and the power dynamic here is very shifted in his favor. You know why he's not getting a job? Because you've enabled him to not need a job. This is not your fault. Don't get me wrong. But he has convinced you that it's okay for him to stay at home and to sleep in all day while you bust your butt every single day and he just reaps the benefits of it. It's not fair and it is absolutely at your expense. You sacrifice so much just to be able to provide for yourself as well as him. So honestly, the problem is absolutely with him. His inability to get back to work and to do something with his life is ruining your life. So in my opinion, it's time to tell him straight up, either get a job or we're done because you are absolutely exhausted and you can't keep living like this. And you know what? If you leaving him and going to live somewhere else causes him to go homeless and to not have any love in his life, then that is 100% his problem. He is doing nothing to try and help himself and better himself in general. And if your boyfriend is not willing to meet the bare minimum requirements of just living together and helping financially and physically, then by all means, I would go with your original idea and ditch this guy. I don't care how long you've been with him. He's clearly taking advantage of you and you can honestly do much better than this. Today, I messed up by letting my friend who likes to prank people into my house. He then lit on fire and burned my Pokemon cards that was worth well over $8,000. Here's what happened. To start things off, let me give you some backstory. When I was in the third grade, my grandfather passed away, and two weeks later in school, I found the most destroyed Pokemon card on the road. My grandfather always had a white beard, and the Pokemon on the card kind of reminded me of him. So from that moment on, I decided that I would collect Pokemon cards. So for eight years 
years now, I collected close to 15,000 Pokemon cards. I know you guys may be like, wow, that's a huge waste of money, as well as other stuff like that. But it reminded me of my grandfather, and I love collecting stuff. So for eight years, Christmases, birthdays, Easters, every chance I got, I would ask to get Pokemon cards. It was a mini obsession. I had even collected all of the original cards. It was very expensive, but this was my life, and it was something that I loved doing. Now here comes a friend. Let's call him Cole for safety reasons. That's not his real name. I've been friends with Cole ever since 7th grade, and I knew he loved my Pokemon cards. Sometime during freshman year before lockdown, he started a prank YouTube channel. He got a lot of views and a lot of subscribers. So because of that, he would always do mini pranks. I wouldn't get too upset, but he took it too far this weekend. So Saturday, he was chilling at my house because I invited him over. Well, everything seemed normal, but he asked to go to the bathroom when we were watching a movie. I keep my Pokemon cards in my room in my closet for safety. He was gone for a while, but I didn't really suspect anything. Well, flash forward to Monday. I look in my closet and all of my Pokemon cards are gone. Quite literally all of them. How he snuck all of them out is beyond me. I honestly wish I had had a camera. So I texted Cole and said, hey, do you know what happened to my Pokemon cards? Cole responded by saying, uh, maybe Charizard ate them? I told Cole, I'm not messing around. Can you please give them back? They mean a lot to me and you know that. He didn't reply after that. That is until I got a notification that he posted on YouTube. It was of him and his friend. It was a video of them taking my Pokemon cards out my back door and along with that they had 15,000 fake cards made with only the backs on them and a white front. Then they burned the rest. I understand what he meant by maybe Charizard got to them. For those of you who don't know, Charizard is like a fire Pokemon and I honestly can't believe he's done this to me. He called me and said he meant to burn the fake cards but ended up burning the real ones on accident which I really don't think is true because the real ones were in special cases. I am now completely broken. Those Pokemon cards were a second part to me. I sent him a huge message and he replied that it was just a prank and to relax. He destroyed $8,000 worth of cards. I am just so broken over this. I blasted him on social media and a bunch of his friends got mad at him and a few got mad at me telling me to drop it. People were telling me to go to the authorities but I'm not that type of person. He ended up deleting the video but I'm still so very upset. All I could think about was the first card I got that reminded me of my grandfather. He messaged me today calling me a traitor for turning his friends against him in a huge paragraph about how it was a prank gone wrong and how I needed to grow up because we're about to graduate high school saying that Pokemon cards are for little kids. Before we dive into this story and how crazy it is, the original poster actually gave us some updates. After this post blew up online, he had a few more things to say about the situation. So after going through photos and messages and receipts, the original poster states that after a lot of thought and a lot of encouragement from people online, he is going to be pressing charges and taking his friend to court. And while he collected about $8,000 worth of Pokemon cards, the value of it was easily over $20,000, especially since he had some of the older sets that were very valuable. So he has every plans of going to the police and reporting this, as well as getting a good lawyer to try and get this taken care of. He said the following. So after going through photos and messages, as well as receipts, I'm able to compile a minimum of $3,000 in value of Pokemon cards that I've collected, and I'm taking this evidence to the cops tomorrow. I spoke to my cousin, and he said I'm going to need solid proof of what the cards were worth, as well as their replacement value. He's a decent lawyer, but he thinks I can get five to $10,000 in court for emotional damage. That's on top of the replacement value as well. I'm very disappointed, because not only has he ignored my calls and messages, but I have also lost a huge part of my life. The original poster goes on to state that they know they're not going to get all of their money back, nor all of the cards back as well. But he states that he can restart and try and build up his collection again. The original poster then goes on to discuss their interaction with Cole. They state, As to my last post, I decided to go to the authorities. However, me being me, I decided to give him one last chance. Three hours ago, roughly at around 7 in the morning, I decided to give him a call. I think he was sleeping because when he picked up, he was very groggy. The call went a little something like this. I said, Cole, I'm being completely serious. If this is a prank or if you still have my cards, I am begging you to give them back. They meant the world to me. Cole responded by saying, dude, I told you I don't have them. I'm sorry about what happened, man. I really am. I went too far. I said, saying sorry isn't enough. You knew how much those cards meant to me and you destroyed a part of my life. Cole then said, I promise it was just an accident. 
I hung up on him after a few more comments about how sorry he was. I didn't bother to bring up repayment and the anger seemed to boil the tears away because I had a sense of justice in me. It took me about two hours to psych myself up to go to the police department. When I walked in, it was very overwhelming. There was a lot of talking and a lot of phones ringing. I walked up to the front desk and asked to report a crime. Maybe 10 minutes later, an officer comes in for an inquiry. After telling him what happened, he seemed very hurt for me. After he asked for evidence and later helped me email everything I had to the police department, as well as to him directly, he asked me if I was sure he burnt the real cards, and I told him I'm about 80% sure. After that, I don't really know much about what will happen next. However, I was told that I couldn't press charges yet, and how they had to open an investigation and gather sufficient evidence and to go over my evidence. They said that they would be contacting me. When I walked out of that police department, I felt like a brand new person, but the same person all over again. Because in that moment, I think I broke down a little bit. I was silent the whole ride home. I didn't even sing along with the radio, which I love to do. I graciously thank everyone for their support. And for those of you who are hurting with me and wanting to support me, I thank you for your kind words and your gestures. I really just hope I'm able to find some kind of justice towards my situation and losing all of those Pokemon cards. There is a lot to unpack here. I am so proud of this original poster for getting past their anxiety and going to the authorities. There is legitimately no excuse for the kind of behavior that Cole exhibited. They burned your personal property that was worth thousands of dollars. As someone who also collected trading cards when I was a kid, of all kinds, I would be so hurt if someone burned my collection. That is absolutely devastating to have something in your life taken away from you, all because of someone else wanting to make a prank video on YouTube. I really hope you're able to prove once and for all that this guy absolutely did burn your cards, and this way he gets charged with something. It's not fair, and he absolutely deserves to pay for his crime. Hopefully this guy is able to find a good lawyer to help him out in this situation, because there's a lot of nuance to this that I definitely do not know the details of. But with whatever happens, I hope it works out, and I hope you're able to find justice for your destroyed Pokemon cards. My girlfriend turns off her location on her phone when she leaves her house, and when I'm not in town, and I don't know what to do. Every time my girlfriend goes out to the store and I'm not in town, she turns her location off. But what she doesn't know is that I can see when she turns off her location. Every time she does it, she claims she is getting me a surprise. But every time I get back in town, there is no surprise. My oblivious self did not think to remember about the surprise, and it's never a surprise enough for her to remember to tell me. The first time she did this, I was 2,000 miles across the country and did not think anything of it. When I asked her where she was, she said, and I quote, it's a surprise. Don't worry, I'll have it for you when you get back into town. I was confused at first, but I know how fast the rabbit hole of overthinking can be, so I chose not to think anything of it. But now that it's reoccurring, I'm not sure what to think at all. She is a very popular person amongst her peers and around our school. She cheerleads and is drop dead gorgeous. It would be super easy for her to pick up anybody that she meets and make them hers because of her social status. This leads me to believe things I thought I never would have to worry about. As I'm writing this, she is currently at a store that would apparently give away the surprise gift she had. So she has turned off her location because it would apparently be too obvious. I don't know if I should believe her because I love her to bits or if I should dig deeper and lose trust with her if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just overreacting, but I want her to be honest with me. Whatever the truth may be, I just need to know. What should I do? I can definitely see where the original poster is coming from, where they say that this is kind of weird. The original poster goes on to say that this was actually his girlfriend's idea for them both to have their locations on so they can both know where each other are in case of like an emergency or anything like that. So this is why they are so confused that their girlfriend is constantly turning off their location when they go out and about and do other things. So from their perspective, it seems super sketchy. The original poster also went on to say that when they confronted their girlfriend about this, she claims to have forgotten about all the incidents regarding her location being turned off. They told her that it made them feel confused about what was going on, but that the girlfriend still seemed unfazed by this. And this really was incredibly upsetting for them. But even with that in mind, and all things considered, I think it's really inappropriate to jump to some weird conclusion. We're going from your girlfriend's just turning off her location to you thinking, oh no, she has to be cheating. Just because your girlfriend is pretty and drop dead gorgeous as you put it, doesn't mean that she's cheating. And I honestly don't think she's tricking you in any kind of way. She could very well be turning off her location so you can't see that she's going to a specific doctor's office. It could also be the fact that, yeah, maybe she is planning some big surprise and she doesn't want you to know the details yet because she's not ready. And the only way she can get away with 
doing that is by turning off location and then going to these certain stores. Is there some kind of like anniversary coming up or some kind of celebration or a birthday that would possibly explain this type of behavior? I just think there's a lot of other explanations here besides, oh no, my girlfriend's cheating on me. Especially if there's no history of cheating and there's no reason for you to think that either of you would be disloyal. And there's also the possibility that she does know that you're tracking her every move. So that's why she's turning it off just to maybe have some privacy. There are a lot of options here and there could be a lot of reasons why this is happening. So in my opinion, I wouldn't jump to some crazy conclusion because it very well could cause some unnecessary friction in your relationship. And I don't think either of you would want that. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.